In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some more related rates, types of problems, and I'm going to look at examples straight out of your textbook so you can follow along if you want. Um, I'm on page 151, and I'm looking at example 3. And we're going to take a look at a volume type of related rate problem. And this one involves a spherical balloon. So. I'm going to read it out loud, and I'm not going to write the whole problem down, it's just too much for me to do, but please look in your book um, before looking at this if you want to, if you think that it might be confusing to follow. But the problem says, air is being pumped into a spherical balloon, okay? And always try to draw a picture if you can, even if it's in its most minuscule manner, okay? So here's my balloon and I've got air being pumped into it at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. And then it asks, find the rate of change of the radius when the radius is 2 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and start my list of what I know, what I'm trying to find, and then what my related rate is. And I'm just going to help you set this up because I think that you guys can solve these on your own. Um, and also the example is right there for you to look at. So see if you can follow it, okay. Um, okay, so what do I know? Oh, I know that the air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 4.5 cubic feet per minute. So this 4.5 cubic feet, oops, I'm putting centimeters definitely not centimeters, um, per minute. And I want to know what this is supposed to represent. So is it dA dt for area? Is it dR dt for radius? It says that air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at this rate. So if I've got air going up inside this balloon, okay, here's my air, and it's going up, Think about what that's affecting. Is it affecting area? Is it affecting the circumference? Or is it affecting the volume? And in this case, it is in fact affecting the volume. So that's the variable I'm going to use. I'm going to call this dv dt, and that's actually very common for volume. And it also says I'm supposed to find the rate of change uh, of the radius. So I'm looking for dr dt, um, and I'm looking at for the when the radius is 2 feet. So that's something else I can put under no. My radius is supposed to be 2 feet. So then what's my relative rate supposed to be? And in this case, my related rate is to how I'm supposed to relate this dr dt with the volume is going to be the volume of the balloon. So the volume of a sphere is V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so what I would do from here is I would differentiate the volume. Once again, please look in your books to follow along a little bit better. And um, you're going to get to the end and substitute the variables that you know. So I can help you get this started. So I'm going to take, I'm going to start on the left here. The derivative of v is 1, and then I have to add on a dv dt. And this is actually very easy to derive. This 4 thirds pi is just a constant, so all I have to do is multiply this by this um, exponent, so 4 thirds times 3 is just 4. So that's 4 pi r squared. Okay, and this should make sense. The derivative of volume would be area. Okay, now of course I did take the derivative of the radius with respect to time, so I need to add on a dr dt. Alrighty. And I know that dv dt is equal to 4.5. And the 4 pi is going to stay there. I'm probably going to be leaving my answer in terms of pi. 
my radius was 2, that's under my known, we're going to square that, and then I'm going to solve for dr dt. Okay, so I'm going to continue over here because I'm running out of some space. So 2 squared, that's 4, times 4 is 16, so 4.5 equals 16 pi times dr dt. To solve for dr dt, I'm going to divide both sides by 16 pi. And I'm actually going to get a pretty funky looking decimal. So maybe in this case, um, multiplying this out might be a better option than leaving radius in there since it's kind of funky. Um, but what you could do also since 4.5 is a decimal, you could multiply both of these by 2. So 4.5 times 2 would be 9, and 16 times 2 is 32, and then I could write pi in the numerator and then add my units. So that would be cubic feet per minute. And it doesn't matter if you want to multiply this out or keep it like a nice fraction. This is a more accurate answer and is therefore more uh, desired, but that's a personal um, preference for you to have. Just make sure that you leave it in three decimal places. So that's how we do related rates with volume.